All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to start by thanking you for taking time out of your day to learn a little bit more about Microsoft Teams. Today, we're going to be focusing on sharing and working with files in Microsoft Teams. The assumption is that you've already taken the Getting Started webinar. You're familiar with the concepts in OneDrive, uh, and you are at least comfortable with what the interface in Microsoft Teams looks like. We're gonna talk about uploading a file in a chat, which is one of the simplest ways to share content. Uh, we're also going to explore the different file options that become available once you share a file through Teams. We're gonna talk about um, sharing files from a team. Instead of just one interaction, one chat, uh, we can store collaborative documents inside of the team and then everyone has access to that. And we're gonna uh, talk about what can be done to the file once it's been uploaded to a team. We'll talk about adding new files and uploading files and folders, sharing them out, um, pinning documents, uh, and then of course, editing them. You can edit a document in three different ways through Teams. You can edit it directly in Teams. You can edit it in the web version of whatever application you're working in, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, or you can download it and work in the desktop app. So those are the different things that we're gonna take a look at. Um, if we have time, we will also take a look at adding a team folder shortcut into my drive, uh, which is part of the OneDrive interface. So this is a little bit of where you're gonna see the two overlap. I get a lot of questions of what's the difference between Teams and OneDrive. And you know, as I keep telling everybody, OneDrive is storage. And always think of it as storage where Teams is where all your collaboration and sharing should be done. Can you share from OneDrive? Yeah, you can, but you're gonna see how much easier it is through the Teams interface. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we jump into Microsoft Teams though, I do want to bring you to the ARC, which is the Administrative Resource Center that just launched at the beginning of September. It is located at admin.resources.osu.edu. You can click on the waffle panel there for Office 365. And then we have each of the Office 365 products listed out, Microsoft Teams being the one we're talking about today. Um, I've explored these in all the other webinars, so I'm not going to take a lot of time on it, but the video demos, we do have the previous ones that have been run posted here. There's also additional training. Uh, the big thing I keep trying to point out to people is there's instructor-led live teams training that you can take when you want to. You click in there, you go to Microsoft's website, and they have scheduled date and times by certified Microsoft instructors. Now, the benefit of doing these webinars, these are more OSU specific, so that makes things a little bit easier. All right, so sharing a file in OneDrive. It's as simple as a chat. So I'm going to pull my Teams interface over. By the way, if you guys have questions, please place them into the Q&A and I will answer them as I go as time allows. We don't have a ton of time. So uh, please try to make certain they are focused towards files and sharing. And you get to see my chat with my manager. <laughs> so I'm in a interaction, as it's called. This is just a chat interaction. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen, the icon chat is highlighted and I'm talking to Teresa Gosser. Everybody can say, hi, Teresa. She's in the session too. Uh, you can see that we've been chatting and you might notice across the top of our inner interaction, there's some tabs. Now I'm on the chat tab. So that's why you're seeing our chatting interaction, but there's other tabs. Let's go over to the files tab. Anytime you share a document through Microsoft Teams, it will show up here. Now, I haven't shared anything with Teresa. Kind of wanted something a little blank for you guys to see. But let me show you the easiest way to share a document. I'm going to restore this to a smaller window because I'm a click and drag kind of person. I'm going to take this file that's just sitting on my desktop. I want Teresa to have access. So I'm dragging it over to the interface. You'll see in the upper right-hand corner, it is uploading. It's shared. She now has access to that file. She can look at it. She can edit it. 
<laughs> she's got full control. It's a one-to-one -one share. Now, that means that I took a file from my desktop, okay? That means a copy of it has been placed in this interaction. These are also stored in OneDrive, and I think that that's one of the reasons it gets a little bit confusing for people. I'm gonna pop over to OneDrive real quick. Those of you that are playing around in OneDrive, you might have even noticed this. There's a folder that's created by default called Microsoft Teams chat files. Anything you share in an interaction like we just did will be listed in here. We've got sorting capability and filtering capability. Let's see, and you can see they're all shared. These are all different things that I have shared out to people. You can see who the last person was that modified it. Um, but this is just a one-to-one -one interaction. I did not share from OneDrive. I shared from my desktop. A lot of times people will want to share from OneDrive. Isn't that really the point? We tell you store your stuff in OneDrive. In the upper left-hand corner of the files panel, in this interaction, there's a share icon. If we click on that, you get two options. Now, I already showed you the second one. That's upload from my computer. I did a click and a drag. But if you've already got it stored in OneDrive, because you're keeping all of your content in OneDrive, you can select from OneDrive. Now you will see all of the files that I have in folders that I have available to me in the My Files section of OneDrive. You'll see a folder here called Buckeye Box Data. That's because I've already been migrated. I'm part of the pilot project to make certain everything works well for you guys. But I've got another folder in there I created specifically for this called Public Speaking. That's the class I took last semester. An order that went horribly wrong this past November. <laughs> and then of course the Microsoft Teams chat files. So let's say I want to share something with her from my public speaking folder, which is already in OneDrive. I'll go to the public speaking folder. This will show me everything inside that folder. And now I can go ahead and upload this document. So one from my desktop, one from my OneDrive. Sometimes this interface takes a little while to update. There's nothing we can do to you can speed that up. It's about going over networks, but you can see the files. Okay. I can do a lot of things with the files in here, but that's just one interaction. Let's focus on teams though, sharing inside of a team. What's the benefit? Well, like I said before, OneDrive is storage. Teams is collaboration. I have a team, uh, you guys have seen it before in the other webinars, test team for webinars. I'm going to click on that team. We're going to pop right in there. We have the general tab channel, not tab channel. We have a document channel for project one. That's just a channel I created to play around with. Every channel also has storage inside of the team. Uh, you can see that across the top, I'm in the generals tab and I have the files panel. These are all of the files that I have shared inside of the webinar. I've removed them, so we're starting from scratch. That means anyone in this team that has access to the general channel, that means everyone, will be able to access any files I load into here. Every team will have a shared library in OneDrive. We're going to pause for a second. We're going to go over to OneDrive. And if you take a look on the left-hand side, you'll see test team for webinars. Or, I'm sorry, team for webinars. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you, when you change the name of a team, the name of the shared library does not update. So I changed the name earlier, uh, and that's why it's not updated. here. And so if I click on team for webinars, these are my channels. These are files that have been stored or saved in this team. I was on the general tab or channel. It's going to be a problem for me. The general channel, okay, you can see it's empty, right? All right? Let's go back to teams. 
Up across the top of our general channel, we have some navigation buttons. The first one is new. This is so you can create a new folder inside this channel. You can create a new document inside this channel. Under upload, you can upload files or folders that already exist. Let's get some content in here. I'm gonna upload some files. I have no idea what I'm uploading. Oh, let's upload the self-deployment articles. That looks good. And we'll do the walkthrough for Mac. I haven't seen this file in a while, so. Here we go, you can see the progress in the upper right-hand corner. It's uploading, the file exists, all right? And again, we can click and drag as well if the file exists on your computer. The easiest way is clicking and dragging. Let's, oh, report fish. Let's bring that whole folder over. You can see it's uploading. All right, let's pop back over to OneDrive. Then you'll see that everything that I uploaded inside the team, we can now also see in the shared library in OneDrive. So I really hope everybody understands that they are two separate entities, but they work in tandem with one another. But what, we can, what can we do once we're inside the team? Anybody in the team has access to these files. So Teresa, I think is in my team. I better make certain. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, she is in there. She is a member. So she should be able to do anything to the documents in there that she would like. Let's go back to the general tab. So I've sent her a message just asking, oh, by the way, you can at at people. So I added at her, so now that's gonna notify her beyond just a, hey, a chat happened. Right. So what can we do with a file once it's in here? Well, the most common thing we do is click on it. Everybody loves to click. Right. And you can see she did respond to me. We'll go back over there in just a moment. Now, this is viewing the document through Microsoft Teams. I'm not opening a second application. I'm not going to a web browser. This is me here in Microsoft Teams working. I have full editing capability because I have full powers in the channel. Anybody that has the capability of the channel can work on it. That's the benefit of collaboration. Uh, if you know how to use Microsoft Word, you shouldn't have any problems. Everything is pretty much the same. Uh, you can have comments, you have, can track changes, anything that you can do in the full-blown version of Word, we can also do here, uh, basic formatting commands, and then we can also close it. So that's what happens when you click on the name of the file. You might have noticed to the right of the name of a file or folder, there's also the more options button and this appears all over Microsoft Office 365 products. And this is an action menu that pertains specifically to this file or folder. You can see that I'm on the action menu for walkthrough for Mac. You can open the file, copy a link to the file. Now that will allow you to email a link to someone. They still can't access it if they're not part of the team. Uh, you can make the document a tab. So if everybody's in their team, we're all working, we're all collaborating, I can actually make it a tab in the channel. So now everyone can see it at the top, or I can see it at the top, and I can quickly get to it and I can work with it. I'm gonna remove that. It just removes the tab. Okay. Give it a second. Go back to my files. All right. You can download the file. You can delete the file. You can pin the file to the top of your list. You can rename the file. 
uh, you see the option open in SharePoint that will open it up um, in the OneDrive web interface in the background. Um, you can move it, you can copy it, and then underneath more, we can also check out. So if this is something that you decide to utilize, um, checking it out means other people can't collaborate on it. So if you've got to make changes, you're checking out a version and then you will recheck it in when you upload it back up. So there's a little bit of workflow uh, in the background. And then of course, everything that I talked about in this action menu is also available up here at the top. Everybody with me so far? There's so much you can do in here. Okay, under open, this is where I was talking about we can edit files in three different locations. You've seen me open it inside Teams, but you can also open it in the app and open it in the browser. So I'm gonna pop over to open in browser real quick. You'll see that another tab opens in my default web browser and the web version of Word will load here eventually. Takes a moment. There we go. Oh, we're gonna have trouble with you again, pop-up bar, aren't we? And back to open, open an app. Sorry, it's, it's on my other screen. I have to drag it over. There we go. Oh, I hope I fixed that one. I <laughs> put that article out. All right, but you see I made a change. Uh, Autosave is on in the upper left-hand corner. So any change that I just made to this document went right back to the team. So everybody will be in that team will be able to see the change that I made. I can save and close. I am gonna go back to Microsoft Word for a moment. Uh, I have shown you how you can open up a file from Teams, uh, but you can also open up a Teams file from your desktop app. You don't have to go into Microsoft Teams. If we go to File and down to Open, some of you may have noticed that on the left-hand side here under the Ohio State University, you can actually see OneDrive and then something called Sites. That might be a little bit confusing, but this is actually your Teams, your shared libraries. Anything that is a team that you have access to will appear here. So I can see my team for webinars. And then there's my documents, open it up. I'll see all of my channels. If I go into general, that is where I put the walkthrough for Mac. So we've seen you can go to Teams and open the file. You can go to the app and open the file, all from, all, all one file stored in one place. All right, back over to Microsoft Teams. Let's see, can I open this? Yes. When, yeah, I guess my typo was fixed. I can't see. Oh, look, there's another one. Man, who reviewed my content? All right, and I can add comments in. Sorry, I can't type. Oh, by the way, you can also open from the desktop app here. All right. Go back to posts. Teresa, do you have the ability to go into that document for me? And while you do that, just make whatever changes. You can even delete it. It's not the original. Delete content. I don't care. I'm going to take a look at the Q&A real quick because we've got about 10 questions sitting in there. All right, 
With Box going away, uh, this is from Evan, with Box going away and it being used as a unit's file storage location, should we use Teams to be a, our file server going forward? OneDrive is tied to an employee. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, we're not taking away your network drives. <laughs> so if you have network drives, you can still continue to use them. But if you are using Buckeye Box as your unit's file storage um, solution, then it's probably an organizational account in Buckeye Box and not an individual's folder that everybody's just uploading files to. And that's a possibility. If it is an organizational account in Buckeye Box, then during migration, I believe the project team, depending upon what decisions are made within each department, because they all have their own say, I believe any organizational account will equate over to a team. So in that case, yes, if you're currently storing in Buckeye Box in an org account, it would become a team. If it is in a personal box account, then no, it is not going to go directly to a team. It's going to be in your personal OneDrive folder inside Buckeye Box data. What you do with it at that point is completely up to you. If you want to take that folder and share it out through OneDrive, you have that capability. We went over sharing in the OneDrive webinar. Uh, more than likely though, you would probably want to create a team and dump that file contents into that team storage. That would be my solution. Uh, how about editing files in Teams? I found it quite difficult. I'm not certain what where the problem is. Um, I didn't find it difficult, but I trained. <laughs> so I can totally understand how it can become cumbersome. Um, I would need more information to be able to answer that uh, in a little more deep scenario. If it's Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, it should be pretty straightforward because the interface is exactly same. So let me know what kind of trouble that you're having. If you save a file to Teams from OneDrive, will it automatically update the file in Teams as you make edits in OneDrive? Well, it depends upon how you share it. So if you used the share feature that I showed you in the upper left-hand corner and went specifically to OneDrive, then you're working with one file. If you shared it from your desktop and then you went back to your desktop, and made the change to that original file, it would not show up in Teams, okay? Because what you're sharing is you're taking a copy and putting it in that team folder. Um, but if you shared it from OneDrive, then you're working with the same exact file. Um, ooh, questions are flying in, which is good. I like them, I like them. Uh, let me scroll down because some of these at the bottom here are a little bit older. Is SharePoint different from OneDrive? Yes and no. Uh, OneDrive and Teams use SharePoint in the background. Uh, so you're going to see the word SharePoint. You're going to hear the word SharePoint. You see in Microsoft Word, it says sites instead of shared libraries. Uh, SharePoint is the backbone, uh, but OneDrive and Teams are separate. They just utilize it. Can you email someone a link to a shared file on Teams? Yes. Um, as I said, there's the copy link option that's up there at the top. Let me get back here real quick. Oops, I went too far. I got click happy. So when the file here is selected, this option here, copy link, now that copies a link. But like I said, if they're not in the team, they can't access it. So sure, go ahead, send them the link. But I tested it yesterday because I wanted to make certain if they're not in the team, they still can't access it. Uh, okay, if shared from OneDrive through Teams, will changes that other users make to the document be reflected in my OneDrive document or just in the version that lives in Teams? Again, it, it depends upon how you shared it. If you shared it using that link and it's coming from your OneDrive account, then you're working with the original file. I tend to use Explorer other than OneDrive web version, but I don't see the shared. No, they're not there. <laughs> um, I'm actually, this is a feature that's just being rolled out uh, where I can add shortcuts. I'm working on the not the, the articles for ARC um, today. They've already been written, but I need to upload them. Um, I can show you really quick how to do it. Uh, kind of. <laughs> quick is an acronym word. Um, so in OneDrive, OK, 
Okay, here's my shared libraries. Which one do I want to add? What do I have not added? Oh, I, I took them all out. Okay, good. So let's say for the team for webinars, I would like project documents. I want that to appear in my files, which means it would show up in the OneDrive desktop app, the Explorer that you're talking about. Up at the top, there's a button that says add shortcut to my files. So if I click that, you'll see a progress in the upper right hand corner there. It's been done. You don't see anything change here on your screen. But now if I go over to my files, you'll see project documents will now appear here. So they still exist in the team, but I have a link to it. So that little icon, so I can get to it quickly from my files. And It takes a second to update here. I didn't think it was working before. Oh, good, it updated. Now in my file, Windows Explorer, it'll appear over here. This is where names are super important <laughs> because I have about four channels called project documents. And if you add a shortcut this way, it doesn't bring the team name across. That's a problem. Uh, so just try to be really clear with your channels, but that is the easiest way to add them into your Explorer. Uh, there is another way, which is a little more complicated, but it does bring the team name over. Uh, check the ARC by the end of the day today. I will have those out there for people. Look for um, adding Teams files to Windows File Explorer. I think that's the name Jason decided on. So look for that one. Okay. Um, You can share the file or folder with folks outside the team by changing collaborations. All right, sharing the link to a file from within a team, you can share the file or folders with folks outside of the team by changing collaborators through OneDrive. Now you're getting tricky because <laughs> you're in OneDrive and you're in Teams. I wouldn't try to do that. Um, the whole point of a team is to lock things down to only being a small group of people that you want to work with. Uh, but the, Short answer to your question is yes, you can play with the permissions. Uh, share a viewable only version of a file. So if I collaborate with other faculty to make an assignment, exam, et cetera, can I share that file with a student using a link like I could bot? Um, Kathy, there's no more anonymous linking. So you would just share it to their email address. Um, I mean, and since they're a student here, they should have their the access to Teams, unless I'm not fully understanding your question. I want to use, okay, I just showed that. New email, we already discussed that. Team. Looking at OneDrive versus Teams, there's a team where a member can upload a file in Teams. However, not through any chat. That's a little bit of uh, troubleshooting remotely that I would not be able to do here in the webinar, um, Deborah Knowles. I would uh, contact the IT service desk or whoever your local IT support is so they could help you troubleshoot that. That does not, doesn't sound like something set up properly. Uh, and Angela asked, can two or more users edit a shared file simultaneously? Yes, they can, unless it's been checked out. Can you share an Outlook email directly to a chat within the Teams or must you save it as a PDF? You can actually email it directly to the team. We went over that in the uh, Teams and Channels webinar. That was last week. Um, yes, you. each channel has an email address. Just grab the email address and you can forward the email directly to it. Um. Um, and that's great to know. Katie, Records Manager just released a Teams file naming convention. That's fantastic. We do link to um, Records Management from the ARC, so there it should be constantly updated. Uh, I, Elizabeth asked, do permissions need to be set in a certain way so that everyone can edit in Microsoft Teams? No. The, not that I'm aware of this standard, they're added to the team unless you demote them and you can't even demote them now. We only have members and owners. So if anything's uploaded, anybody that's a member should be able to edit that file. Uh, that's again, something that we would have to troubleshoot. Um, 
team. You have a team which works only faculty for collaborating. I'm sorry. If I have a team which includes only faculty for collaborating on course materials, and then I want students to see that file, how do I do that without adding them to the team? Because I wouldn't want a student to have editing. Oh, I see what you're saying. You wouldn't want a student to have editing access. Hmm. That's a workflow question. So faculty. I'd have to think on that. Bill, I'm going to have to get back to you on it. Let me, let me make a note of that. Bill. Hopefully there's not a lot of Bill Cohen so I can find you and I can respond to that question. Okay. Um, and what permissions do guests have in Teams to files? Well, they're members. So they would have the same level of access that you've provided your members, which is the ability to edit. Uh, Okay, I'm over, <laughs> way over, I told them it would take longer. Um, the biggest thing to remember is play with it. Play, play with the app. You're not going to break it in a way that the team cannot fix it. And now is the time uh, because the, your, your OneDrive is empty, <laughs> your teams are empty. If you are part of the university, make a team, play in it. Delete the team when you're done. We do not have restrictions on who can create teams and who can do what. Uh, so go in there. The best way to learn about this application is to give it a shot. Um, I have a number of people I test things out with every day. Uh, you know, I'll hear that something can be done or can't be done, and I'll, and I'll go confirm it. We have a lot of different things that we're adding every single day to the ARC. Uh, so spend some time in there. And go back through and watch the webinars. Uh, even if you sat through one, sometimes you're in the middle of the webinar, you're paying attention, but something else happened. You go back and you rewatch them or you watch a session you didn't get to join. Questions get asked that did not get asked in your session. So go back, play with them uh, and try to break it. <laughs> Don't tell Jason I said that. <laughs> try to break it. Um, add links. Um, Invite outside people into a test team to see what your guests are going to see. Uh, it wasn't until I actually invited my outside account that I fully understood what our guests are going to see. And it's a nice, easy process. So to so play around with it. Um, I'm not going to close the session because there are still questions rolling in. For those of you that have to leave because this is supposed to end at 11 o'clock, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, and check out the recording. For those of you that can stick around and continue to answer the questions, I will try to type the answers in uh, and check out the FAQ when you're done from all these different webinars. We're adding questions all the time. So thank you so much.